Hi, and welcome to Scrap Busting January here at Simply Shoeboxes. We are join, joining Shell at Shell's KB's and Suzanne at So Delightful and taking our scraps, and we're going to bust them this January into things for charity. Ours are going to be all going for Operation Christmas Child Shoeboxes, and we'll be sewing. Shell's going to be knitting and crocheting her yarn scraps away for shoeboxes and other charities, and Suzanne will be sewing and beading and all kinds of non-sewing projects and stuff she'll be doing. So we're going to be sharing what we're doing, and today I'm here just to show you what we're going to be doing at Simply Shoeboxes. First thing we're going to be working on with our large piece of fabrics will be tote bags. You can see we make book bags large enough for our shoe boxes that will hold a full-size notebook as well as all the other supplies that we send the children for school. Pencils, calculators, coloring books, crayons, color pencils, whatever we send them can fit in this bag and they'll have it to carry to school. So when I come upon my scrap box of fabric and there's a large enough piece, I'll make a tote bag out of it. I've made patterns out of cardboard for all my things I'm going to be making and this one is like 14 by 23, so it's hard to get in the frame here. But that's what one piece will take. If I don't have a piece that large, I've made a half a bag. So the front can be one color, the back can be a different color, or it can be the same fabric, I just might not have it in one full piece that I normally do. I've also made a half bag going the other way, so that the top and the bottom would be different if that's what my scraps have. The other thing I do is use quilt binding that I have for the handles. I edge stitch the edges and turn the handles, turn them into handles. This is the very first video I've ever made, so bear with me as I try this. As you can see, I have two baskets full of this quilt binding. It's a uh, double fold quilt binding. You can see it's, and what I do is I just edge stitch both edges and cut in and make it into the handle. So I've got two baskets full of different colors, so I'm set for however many tote bags I might be able to make. <clears throat> I'm sure it's more than I can make. The first things I have ready for tote bags are these uh, fat quarters. Anything that's not yardage fabric, I call it scrap. So my fat quarters I'm calling it scraps. So I have fronts and lining fabrics together, and I'm using row grain ribbon as handles on these. So that's the first thing I have ready to start cutting and piecing together for tote bags. We line all of our tote bags, so we have an outside piece and an inside piece. So if I piece the outside with several pieces, I'm not concerned about the extra seams because the lining will be sturdy and keep it from falling apart. Okay, so, and these patterns, we've done, not exactly this, but very close to this, um, that uses two fat quarters um, at simplyshoeboxes.com. We'll put the link below, but it's a full tutorial with pictures and everything, so you can make your own book bags if you'd like. The other thing we're going to make are pencil pouches. We include a tote bag and a pencil pouch in every one of our shoe boxes. Um, these also are lined and you can see they have an extra piece as a casing. So this gives us something to do with our smaller pieces. We have the pencil pouch pattern, which is 10 by 10, so which I made a little bit smaller than the, what we have on the website now, but it's 10 by 10, and we need one of the fabric and one of the lining. If I don't have a piece quite that big, I've made a pattern for a half of a pencil pouch. So either the top half or the bottom half can be different, or the front and the back will be different. Or they might be the same fabric, just I'll have to put the extra seam in it. The other piece is the casing. So that's even a smaller piece, if I have scraps that size. Or I've made a half a casing pattern <clears throat> for even smaller pieces. So the front and the back may be different, but it looks nice to have different colors. Anyways, I love having the pops of color. So, the other thing I can be making is the um, tote bags, drawstring tote bags here, that 
are smaller than the pencil pouches. They're good for jacks, Legos, that kind of thing. They're great for marbles too, but Shell, Shell's KB, every year has made us like, a, crocheted us a hundred marble bags and fills them with marbles for all of our shoeboxes, our older kids' shoeboxes. So we won't be making any marble bags here because <laughs> um, she takes care of that. But you can see this is this one's a little bit smaller, so I can make them. I'll make them the same width because I, I don't want them any smaller than that. But then, however long the fabric is that I happen to have, <clears throat> these two you can find. They're a little bit different. I've modified them a little bit, but basically you can find this at simplyshoeboxes.com on the craft page too. We'll, Sarah will put the link below for you. I'm Cheryl, by the way. I'm guest uh, video in today. <laughs> Um, like I said, this is my first time, so bear with me. And we invite you all to join us this January for Crafting for Charity with your scraps. And it can be Operation Christmas Child like we're doing. Um, I know Shell, one thing she's doing is um, Premies of the Carolinas. They make crochet hats for uh, or knit hats for babies in the um, NICUs. And anyways, there's so many different um, charities out there that you can craft for. But we're doing Operation Christmas Child. Okay, one thing that I've been doing these last few months is I've been making um, a lot of the pencil pouches and book bags. When I have leftovers, what I do is I have a piece of fabric that's yardage for the outside and a piece of fabric that's yardage for the lining. When I'm, I cut all I can out of one, I cut all I can out of the other and I match them up. Sometimes I have some left. For instance, like this, I have some of the blue left. So I went ahead, instead of throwing it in my scrap box, I went ahead and made, uh, cut them into extra pieces. This is a lining piece for a book bag. Here's some pieces for um, the pencil pouches. I also cut um, the extra casings for the pencil pouches, and I go ahead and sewed the first step on those. So these are all ready, and what will happen is Sarah likes to do this part. She comes and she'll match these all up, and then my other daughter, Elizabeth, will sew them all up for us. She's most the most sewer here. So, okay, so what I have is I have two boxes of scraps. This is the tiny pieces. A lot of these, what I might end up doing is just piecing them together. And then I'll have a nice piece of fabric that's quilted together and I can make whatever I want out of it. I might even make some baby quilts, um, baby size quilts to put in the shoe boxes. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet when I get to that part, but that's something I'll be doing. I also have these strips. They're like two inch strips that were given to me. Um, so I'm going to sew those all together and then decide what else I have to do with those. Another thing I have <coughs> excuse me, or the, is this strip left here of cute little guys um, that I might make pockets on something or I might make a panel down the front of a book bag or put it in quilt. I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet, but that'll be a fun thing. Another thing I have is some scraps of meaty someone has given me and so I might make some loveys out of that or something I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet either I also just have a bunch of pieces left here, fabric um, this is another box full, I have heavyweight scraps that are great for like um, tools and the heavier things, they're great for marbles too but like I said shells take care of our marble bags so I won't be making any marble bags but I'll probably make them into some kind of a tote bag, or uh, it's possible I'll make them into a, um, like a tool belt apron thing. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, another thing is just a bunch of more fabric, some special fabric that people want made in certain things. We're doing a cow theme box, so this has cows on it, so I have to get an order for that, what everybody wants. And then this is just more and more fabric I have that I'll be cutting into one or the other. So we'd love to have you join us and let us know what you're crafting who you're crafting for. Um, you can join us on, on our Facebook page, Simply Shoeboxes. Shell is on Facebook at Shell's KB's. Suzanne's at So Delightful. She's also at so delightful .blogspot com. She has a blog there. Um, but we're inviting everyone. Oh, another place you want to look at is Crafting for Shoeboxes um, on Facebook. It's a group of people who, um, it's a Facebook page. And it's a group of people who craft for shoeboxes. Operation Christmas Child as well as other shoebox um, gifts. Um, so you can 
check them out, and you'll they sh a lot of people share what what they're making. So um, it's a good place to find more things. So um, while you're here at YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the Simply Shoeboxes YouTube channel. Sarah would appreciate it, I'm sure. Um, she puts up um, videos all the time about her packing shoeboxes and stuff. I will continue to give updates here and at the blog and on the Facebook page. I'll share things that we're making, what our progress is, um, and how many things we've got made and stuff. So if you have any questions, leave them. Otherwise, thanks for listening.